We're going to do that example that we did kind of last time in class theoretically, but this time solving it in Mathematica. So let's go back to our Huey Lewis problem. So I know that my y sub 1 from 0 to pi is going to be equal to 10. My y sub 2 is going to be equal to 20 from pi to 2 pi. My period t is going to be 2, 2 pi seconds. And now what are we trying to do? We're trying to get our frequency spectrum. So I'm going to calculate my harmonic coefficients. So a sub n, I know that is going to be equal to... 2 divided by t. I have to multiply this by this piecewise function, so I need to integrate my y sub 1 times my cosine of 2 times pi times n times t divided by t. I'm going to integrate that for my limits of integration from t goes from 0 to pi. And then I need to close that. Plus, I want the same thing. The only thing that's going to change is my y sub 2. So y sub 2 here and close it, and this is what we've got. So, uh, let's go ahead, oh, oh, what's my mistake here? You have to change your limits of integration, Josh. Don't make these simple or straightforward mistakes. Yeah, so this looks a little bit more complicated. Now, one of the things you could do to kind of try to simplify your life is use full simplify. So this is a little bit nicer. So, let's look at what happens when we plug in, what is sine of pi? What is sine of two pi? What is a sign of any integer value? So a sub n, I'm going to slash dot, n, what happens when n is 1? What happens when n is 15, 16? It's always going to be 0. So a sub n is always uh, uh, kind of 0 here. Now, you notice that I didn't plug in. What happens when I plug in for n equals 0? So this is an issue. So whenever you're calculating the zeroth order harmonics, you don't want to use, you can't just plug in for n here. So instead, what happens, what is cosine, well, let's look at here. What happens when n is equal to zero? It's just one. So if I want to calculate my a sub zero harmonic, it is just going to be this entire function here, the same thing, but, let me paste it in here, I'm going to get rid of this because this is just going to be one. So zero to two pi, zero to pi, pi to two pi, etc. That's it. That's my a sub zero. Now what about my b sub zero? What is sine? Actually, let's go ahead and pull this out. What is sine of zero? I got to calculate such that n goes to zero. That makes sense. Okay. So our b sub zero is going to be below zero always. So we never have to calculate that again. Never in this course. That's an, that should be an easy, some you know, fairly straightforward points. So if I want to calculate my other value here, my b sub n, it is just going to be here times sine, sine. That's it. Now our b sub n's might be a little bit more interesting. I have two, three. Anyways, now we can start to kind of develop and, again, calculate our uh, frequency spectrum. So I want to look at the first 10 harmonics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table. So my A's, harm A, is going to be equal to table A sub N slash dot N goes to I from I equals 1 to 10. And I could insert, if I want to include the zeroth order harmonic, um, I could insert a sub zero at the first instance. So those are my harmonics with all with the zero one as well. It's just good practice. I mean, plotting the zeroth order harmonic is not going to be useful for your, your fundamental frequency is not zero. So that's kind of why sometimes I like to um, avoid it. But again, that fundamental frequency is the spacing. We'll see that in a second. Harmonic B is just going to be the same thing here. B sub n, except... We know that this is always going to be zero. So those are my harmonics. What about, again, what are we plotting on our frequency spectrum? Let's look back at our notes. Well, your frequency spectrum is going to be this amplitude, the C sub n, which is going to be the magnitude. So my C sub n is going to be equal to a table of square root of harm a squared plus arm b squared, square root that, from i equals 1 to length 
of harm A or B. So those are my C sub n values. So that's my C sub n. Now what am I plotting here? Well, these are my fundamental frequencies. Remember, so my frequency F um, spectrum is going to be a table. So these are integer values, right? So here, this first value is our zeroth order harmonic. So that is going to be when n, so actually let's define delta F here is going to be equal to 1 divided by t. So that's my fundamental frequency. This value is here. So n times delta F. So we are going to go from n goes from 0 to uh, see, length of harm A. And this won't, should not. Uh, so if we do this, this is going to be a little bit too long. Let's see. Let's show you. So now I want to transpose my, my x-axis first. So F spectrum, my Cn. It doesn't work. Why? Because my list is too long. So I need to do this. Length of this minus 1. Now I have, again, zero frequency, my zero order harmonic. First frequency, my fundamental frequency, this harmonic, etc. Boom, 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 boom. Everything uh, else should hopefully make sense in this world. So let's go ahead and do a plot. And I'm going to make a nice, I like this style of plot. So I'm going to do first this plot. So this is nice. But this can get a little bit boring. So instead, I'm going to do my plot range all. I'm going to do my image size 1,000. We'll get out of the screen in a second. We're going to do frame true. We're going to do frame style directive. You know the procedure. Thickness 0 0.05. Bold black. 50, 50, black again, and then plot style, I'm going to do directive, yeah, red, point size, 0 0.03, then I'm going to do, uh, close that up, and I'm going to do filling bottom. And now we can see my frequency spectrum. So a little bit different. Now, when you're giving your uh, kind of solution, this would technically be the dominant frequency. And again, it depends on your given, if you're given that zeroth order harmonic. But when we're looking kind of at practical values, that zeroth order is not going to be as important. So unless I ask you for the zeroth order harmonic, I'm just doing this for full completeness. Um, you can go just from n equals 1 to uh, of these other values. But again, I might be tricky on an exam and give you that zero order harmonic. Now, if I ask you what's the dominant frequency, it is the zero order harmonic. I mean, technically. Uh, but is a zero frequency really meaningful in engineering? I would argue not usually. So uh, next time, we are going to see how then we could use this to plot our Fourier series, which is just this infinite sum of sines and cosines, uh, as you see here. All right. So I will see you all next time. Have a good one. See you in the next video. Bye.